In the UK, we use IGF-1 as the test of choice um, to try and diagnose acromegaly. Um, the lab that we use has a slightly different assay to the one that's over here. Um, and also, um, we actually have slightly different units, so I'll convert the units too. So, we currently know from Stein Neeson's PLOS One paper from 2015 that an IGF-1 of greater than 1,000 nanogram per mil, which would equate to 131 nanomole per litre in US units, has a 95% positive predictive value for the diagnosis of acromegaly. So what that means is, is if you get an IGF-1 greater than that value, then that patient is 95% likely to have acromegaly. So I do think that's a very useful test. However, having said that, that threshold may even be too high, and maybe we're missing ones that have an IGF-1 slightly lower than that threshold, but we just ignore because they've not quite reached that threshold. I think if you've got a test that has a 95% positive predictive value, it's probably because it's a very high threshold as well. So I do wonder how many of the ones that aren't quite reaching that threshold. So in human medicine, they'd call that mild acromegaly. I wonder how many of those we could miss by using that cutoff. But we need a starting point. It needs to be looked at by more people, and so I think using that cutoff initially is okay, but I wonder with time if actually we'll actually start to identify cats who are slightly below that threshold.